Welcome to my Dental Keys video on final impressions for complete dentures. This video will focus on maxillary final impressions. Final impressions are made after border molding is completed, and final impressions are poured to make master models. First, assemble the armamentarium as shown in this illustration. We'll start by reviewing some helpful tips that will improve the outcome of your final impression. After border molding is completed, you can check that your border molding is accurate and not overextended. To do so, perform an alginate wash. In other words, an alginate wash is a check step before proceeding to your final impression. You do not need to use adhesive when performing an alginate wash. Simply apply alginate to the border molded tray and insert as if making your final impression. Upon setting of the alginate, you can remove the alginate wash and identify the areas that are overextended and trim them using a scalpel or sharp instrument. If you have areas that are underextended, repeat the border molding procedure in this area before proceeding to your final impression. Optionally, using a number six round burr or round acrylic burr, place two to three holes in the rugae area and mid palate of the maxillary tray to reduce potential hydraulic pressure in subsequent steps. Depending on the impression philosophy that you are following, identify if there are tissue rests or tissue stops on your final impression tray. If tissue rests were not created during the fabrication of the tray, you can place four small, widely spaced pieces of base plate wax within the tray over the residual ridge to provide additional space for the impression material and relief for the tissue. Practice seating and removal of the tray with the patient prior to making the final impression. Ensure that there is adequate retention from the border molded tray alone without the addition of the impression material before proceeding to the final impression. Apply one coat of PVS adhesive to the intaglio of the tray, green stick compound, and two to three millimeters onto the external border of the tray if the green stick compound or border molded material does not extend to this region. Ensure the tray is dry before you apply the adhesive, and you can use the air water syringe to evaporate the monomer after applying the adhesive. Just as a helpful tip, ensure you've selected the appropriate adhesive for the final impression material you are using. In other words, PVS adhesive for PVS material. PVS working times are as follows. Two minute working time and five minute setting time for regular set PVS. However, different manufacturers may vary slightly and you should check the specific manufacturer's instructions before utilization. Upon injection of the PVS into the tray, start a timer for five minutes to aid in timing the removal of the impression. Ensure that there is enough PVS in the cartridge so that you do not run out of PVS while loading your tray. You need at least one half to three quarters of your impression material cartridge full before starting. Bleed PVS injection gun before putting the applicator tip on the impression gun. This will ensure that the material appropriately mixes and sets in the patient's mouth. You never wanna have an inappropriately mixed material that doesn't set. It will make removal of the impression very difficult for both you and the patient. Tip the patient's chair back so that you are able to easily place the tray in the patient's mouth. To aid in the placement of the tray and to ensure that the patient stays with their mouth open and their tissue stays dry, you can place metal retractors in the patient's mouth on either side. Either the patient or your assistant, if one is available, can hold those retractors. Dry the soft tissue either with the air water syringe or a 2x2 two two gauze. Now, place the PVS into the tray by injecting the material from the impression gun. Butter the impression material into the tray as you apply it, evenly spreading approximately 1 to 2 millimeters of PVS throughout the intaglio of the tray. Upon injection of the PVS into the tray, remember, start a timer for 5 minutes to keep track of the set of the material. Use a hand instrument or spatula to continue evenly spreading the material in the tray to avoid voids and poles in the impression. Seat the tray moving from the posterior to the anterior as you place the tray. Confirm full seating and support with bimanual pressure. Hold right around the canines or the palate to stabilize the tray. You should feel 
if you use tissue rests, that the tissue rests are seated and that you can go no further vertically with the tray. Once the impression tray is completely seated in the patient's mouth, tip the patient upright to aid in patient comfort and remove the retractors carefully from the patient's mouth. When you seat the posterior of the tray for the maxillary impression, material will express from the posterior. Use either your fingers or cotton swabs to remove excess material that is expressed from the posterior of the tray so that you prevent gagging of the patient during the setting of the material. Now it's time to mold and contour the impression material as it sets in the patient's mouth. Perform functional and guided movements as follows. Instruct the patient to move their mandible side to side, forward and back, and to open wide and close together. Ask the patient to pucker their lips and smile as big as they can. Request that the patient bear down and blow out through their nose. You can hold their nose in the process to increase the pressure. Grasp the patient's philtrum and pull it upward, forward, and downward and side to side. For the cheeks, grasp the patient's cheek and move it upward, outward, downward, and side to side, as you did with the philtrum. Continue border molding in cycles of 20 to 30 seconds until the initial set of the material at approximately two to three minutes. At this point, you can pause the border molding motions and ask the patient to relax as the material sets completely. Upon full setting, the PVS will no longer be shiny or sticky. Now, remove the impression. It should be retentive on its own, so you will need to break the peripheral seal or suction in order to remove the impression tray. After ensuring your patient is comfortable and that they have rinsed out, inspect the impression. There should be no voids or flash. If you have a very small void, you can reline this area. Use a small yellow applicator on your PVS gun and apply a small amount of PVS to the void. Contour it with your spatula and reinsert the tray and allow the material to set. If there is a pull, you can cut the pull out with a scalpel and perform the same small addition of PVS to the trimmed area. Disinfect the impression and impression tray after you are satisfied with the impression prior to sending or bringing the impression to the lab. Review our checklist to ensure that your maxillary final impression adequately captures the anatomy for the maxilla as well as does not have any voids, pulls, or imperfections in the material. Thank you for learning with us and please continue on to learn about the mandibular final impression or to learn about pouring models from your final impression.